Last but not least, we have the next speaker, which is Michael Falk. Michael, uh, as uh, one of the people who are in the green technology or green products, uh, he is uh, going to talk to us about how green mission to enhance human health, improve quality and life and save the environment. Well, this is the, the way that we, we are always talking about green products should bring value. Yeah. So as a person, he, he is a person that takes care of projects uh, and he's a business developer and he comes from a company called Aristec who not only talk about life and environmental sciences biotech group, since he has 30 years of pioneering the multi-enzyme technology, which emphasize or specialize in indoor air and environmental quality with R&D and manufacturing of certified bio, eco, green, halal, nano. Wow, all these things all come in into our econ, our HVAC or our econ. So you have got your certification, green certification and ISO 14001 uh, from the various um, uh, accreditation body. And now you are also involved in contributing your product towards the green building and of course, in supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You, I'm sure you, you, with your well experience in green products uh, and your, your speaking seminars in all over the world between Malaysia and Singapore, and now you're talking about indoor air quality and how we should improve our air quality as part of we getting healthier, as what uh, Chris is saying, we have to get healthier. Wealth is health, yeah. So without further ado, Michael, uh, I pass the mic to you and uh, do you need any assistance on the on the presentation or you can do it from your side? I think um, we, I can do it from my side. I have uh, someone helping me out. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay, um, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Thank you for um, staying back to attend uh, my um, talk. Um, so the topic of my talk is um, basically on um, improving or saving the planet Earth on, uh, from the uh, bio with bio green eco aircon maintenance solutions. So um, for starters, let me play a short video so you have a brief idea of what we are about. Um, <laughs> Aristec Australia, Proprietary Limited, was founded and established in Australia in 1990 by Mr. William Rodney Yeo. Then spread their wings to Malaysia in 2002, Hong Kong in 2009, China in 2010, We are the owners and manufacturers conforming to JIT, just-in-time processes. Enzymes are very specific. It reacts to humidity and temperature. Therefore, when preparing the formulation, we need to be fully on guard about how we produce the products. Manufacturing is a tedious process where we have to be meticulous and make sure everything is according to whatever is supposed to be. We don't have many challenges in R&D as we have our own laboratory and two R&Ds which have their own capabilities. As a service provider, Aristec Sindiran Burhard is comprised of skilled engineers and well-trained technicians dedicated to offering highest quality of services to the clients with strict standard operating procedures. We can service your AHU, FCU, duct and cooling tower. Not only that, but we also do the split unit and ceiling cassette cleaning service as well. We also have our own equipment for each HVAC sector services. Our business focuses on multi-enzyme technologies, which is pH 6.5 to 7.5 neutral. 
We do not only produce products specifically for HVAC and refrigeration systems decontamination, but also various hygiene applications. In simple words, our product is a lifestyle product which preserves the air, water and land. Our products are bio, eco, green and halal certified technology which not only complement the environment but also helps to improve health, quality of life, energy and system efficiency, prolong equipment life, prevent asset damage and protect the water table. We have Nano Verify, My Hijau Marks for products and services, International Eco Label, ISO 14001-2015 and the BioNexus product certification from Biotech Malaysia. Green technology is very much needed, especially in Malaysia, where we have neglected the environment for decades. It's high time for us to reverse what we have destroyed. Most people think that green technology is expensive. It is not true. Talk to us. Okay, um, thank you for um, attending the talk, uh, everyone. So um, without further ado, I shall go through uh, some slides. Okay, can everyone see the slide? Okay, so the topic today would be on protecting the earth with bio green eco air con maintenance solutions. And um, why is there a need for this? Let me go to the next slide. Because um, commonly around the world, the air con cleaning methods comprise of um, something like uh, chemical cleaning, steam cleaning, or maybe even high pressure water jet cleaning. So most likely around the world, the, the, it's chemical cleaning, which uh, will be made up of acid and alkaline, which are very corrosive. And all these chemicals are, are pollutants to the environment. So every time somebody uses chemicals to clean the air con, it will be going to the environment and polluting the water table, the rivers, and everything else. And um, with steam cleaning and high pressure jet cleaning, it involves a lot of using of um, uh, heat, which means a lot of energy usage, as well as water usage, there's wastage. And it doesn't solve one of the pertinent problems that uh, will be occurring in aircon systems, which I will uh, come to in the next few moments. Okay, the universal problem with this HVAC or air conditioning or refrigeration systems is there will be two things. When it comes to um, the contaminants inside the aircon coils, there are such things called biofilms, which are made up of bacteria, mold, fungus, and algae. And this biofilm buildup will be um, on the coils and inside the coils. And what they will do is they will reduce the airflow and um, you know, slow down the heat exchange, and it will be uh, causing higher energy usage. And this leads to also poor indoor air quality, as well as loss and comfort, higher medical bills, absenteeism, food and product contamination, blockages, and more and more complaints. And ultimately, it's not good for human health. So it's all about health again. And when it comes to chemical cleaning, as I mentioned earlier, highly corrosive chemicals like acid, which is pH 1 to 3, alkaline pH 11 to 13, they will cause the coil fins to be oxidized and corroded. And this will lead to design failure and more breakdowns, loss in efficiency, and higher operating costs and expenditures, and also higher capital expenditure because you may have to end up replacing the whole aircon system. And it destroys the water table and environment. Ultimately, again, it is also unhealthy for everyone, including the humans in the building. And there were some recent studies uh, done. Uh, this was last year, I believe. Um, around October 2020, by, done by the University of Oxford. So they were saying that basically um, with this term called sustainable cooling, it, the global community must commit to sustainable cooling or risk block, blocking the world into a daily feedback loop where demand for cooling energy drives further greenhouse gas emissions and results in even more global warming. So these um, sustainable cooling methods not only include energy, but also the pollution of the environment and so on and so forth. So and, uh, air cons are very important around the world 
and it helps to build up communities in terms of even small businesses and so forth. And um, we contribute in this sense to many of the ESG or SDG, the United Nations um, go, uh, goals. Um, these are the goals, the 17 goals altogether. But what was said is that sustainable cooling is possibly the missing number 18 SDG. So it's SDG 18 as I term it. And it in fact covers all 17 of the goals, which if we have time, we will go through, but I shall um, move along first. And basically my company, we are part of the Aerostat group. We are a life and environmental sciences uh, company um, into biotechnology, particularly multi-enzyme technology. Um, we have certifications from um, various um, authorities, including the BioNexus status, we see at the bottom. Um, we have the ISO 14000 by SGS for both the products and the services. We are also um, green certified with a My Hijau mark from the local environment ministry uh, itself um, for our product manufacturing as well as our services. I believe we are the only double certified um, green and ISO 14000 service provider in Malaysia itself. We are also eco label certified by CIRIM. So this uh, itself means that our product is readily biodegradable and within 28 days, up to about 89% will readily biodegrade. So leaving minimal carbon footprint in the environment. We are now uh, Watan Malaysia, uh, which is made in Malaysia. Um, we are Halal certified by Jakim locally and along the way we've won various awards. This is our timeline. We started off from the right hand side in 1990 in Australia. Um, as was seen in the video. Then we started the Malaysian uh, setup in 2002. Um, Malaysia is basically the regional um, HQ where we have now set up the um, R&D as well as the manufacturing. That was in 2011 when we started Aerostack Innovations. It is a requirement of the BioNexus status that we have research and manufacturing in Malaysia. Along the way, we had all the other certifications and testing done. And we won several awards, including the Enterprise 50 in 2016, Global Clean Tech Innovation Programs, the Star Outstanding Business Award in 2017, Brand Laureate for HVAC Solutions, Islamic Innovation Challenge in 2018. And in 2019, we got ourselves um, certified as nano uh, products. In, so in Malaysia, we call it nano verification. This is under the Ministry of Science and Technology. Um, so it means our products are considered nanoenzymes, another category of enzymes. And we also found out from one of the local um, green building authorities or organization called Green RE that we contribute four points directly and four points indirectly um, towards the green building certification. So that it also means um, with the other international organizations, we will also contribute some points. And last year, we also won the ASEAN Business Award for um, SME excellence in innovation. So we were the only science-based company in this category. Um, our unique setup is basically this. We have in-house research going on, um, both here in Australia, and we will come up with new products um, and we send it for testing um, by third party um, uh, authorities and so forth. If it's good, we're going to field trial. And if it um, is not up to par, it goes straight back to our R&D and where we will fine tune it. And once everything is okay, we will go into full production and where we have quality assurance, quality checking and so forth. And we sell the products or provide the service. We are the product owners and manufacturers, uh, ongoing R&D as mentioned. The knowledge in LT and some technology is since 1990. And it happens to be proprietary food grade non-GM. Uh, that means genetically modified multi-enzymes. So it is 100% um, natural. Um, as mentioned, we are contributing to the, with the various green building certifications, uh, certification bodies like um, Green RE, GPI, and LEED. And um, there are very strict SOPs to be followed or complied with. Uh, we have certified trainers and accredited applicators when it comes to application of our products. There's no compromise on product and service. And the MSDS is written by Camwatch itself, the largest international uh, body in this area. And we also do custom-made formulations. This is our lab in Australia on the left and our lab in Malaysia on the right, which is just outside my uh, meeting room here today. 
And um, we have a, a separate factory in another part of Malaysia, in Cha Alam, um, where it's a um, halal and green certified uh, factory where we do production under just just in time system. So everything is freshly made to make ensure that it's the best quality. The, our products actually can be applied to many different sectors. It is across the board. It is not just HVAC or buildings. It can be hospitals, antennas, facades, oil and gas platforms, ships, uh, automobile, refrigerations, cold rooms, aircraft, um, you know, driveways, containers, logistic containers, cooling towers, toilets, train lines, etc. So what is the solution? The Aerosec solution is simply this. We will apply our enzymes on or into the substrate, you see on the top right hand side, and it will break the bonding of the um, biofilms made up of bacteria, mold, fungus, algae, etc. And once the bonding is broken, the, it is easy to flush it away because normally the biofilm is very sticky and slimy. Locally, some people call it a slime um, or jelly. So imagine the um, slime you find in drain pipes, which are getting clogged up. So those are actually biofilms. You will find this inside the aircon coils as well. And so how it works is if you look at the bottom left-hand side of the picture, you see the, so the um, grayish area there basically is uh, all the biofilm. Once the enzyme is uh, applied to it, it will break it down and it will clear, as you see on the right-hand side, the picture on the right-hand side, and you will find this debris there, which it can be cleared away. So you need to get rid of the biofilm before you can decontaminate uh, an aircon coil or a filter or whatever it is. Um, basically, the core technology, our proprietary multi-enzyme um, product is the BMED, where it will be uh, applied. The, you have attachments, they start building up and, and, and so and uh, once it's um, released, it will be easy for it to be cleared off. Again, here we're showing on the picture and the diagram there, the nano and bio enzymes, the BMED is applied in, on the top layer. The red line you see is actually the biofilm and it will be holding in the bacteria, the mold, the fungus, etc. And it's very, very difficult to clean it off because it's very sticky. It's stuck on the surface, whether it's a drain pipe or a HVAC or aircon coil. So typically what happens is people use uh, chemicals to clean it and they just burn off the surface. But a lot of it remains there and some of it will have roots um, embedded into the, the, the surface itself. So our product basically will break the bonding of the biofilms. You see the second pic, uh, picture. And once it's broken, it's easy to release everything and we just flush it away with normal flushing. So there's no damage to the substrate because it happens that our product is neutral, pH neutral in fact. And this is a typical HVAC system whereby you have um, fresh air going in from the left hand side through a filter, the coil system, the blower, and then it goes through a ducting and into the room. And it goes back in again. It keeps circulating in and out the whole day long. This can be in the office building, the mall, the school, wherever, any buildings around. And as it circulates, the red spots appear. They represent contaminants, biofilm, mold, fungus, algae, and so forth. We design products with take care of the filters, the coils, the blowers, the ducting, room surface areas, etc. And this is to show you where we stand. The, the upper picture is basically an acidity chart, whereby acid is normally on the left-hand side, where it's pH 1 to 3. Alkaline, the better chemical that a lot of um, cleaning contractors use nowadays around the world is uh, pH 11 to 14, still corrosive. And we are in the mid-range. We actually range in the middle. We are actually pH 7, but we would just say anything between pH 6 to 8 is neutral enough, so there will be no corrosion. So in the picture below, you will see what happens when acid is used on the left-hand side. It's highly corroded, the coffin. After several washes, it will start to be corroded. On the right-hand side, alkaline is used. There is corrosion going on as well. And next to it is where our BMED is used. Um, you see the blue fin coating when you buy an aircon, it's normally blue color. So that is the protective coating that is there. It will remain that color all the way through when our product, the enzymes are used because it's non-corrosive. And there was a testing done by CTRM in Malaysia. It's, CTRM stands for Composite Technology Research uh, Malaysia in Malacca. So they do testing for aircraft material and over a 10-year 
period of testing, it was found that acid resulted in a weight loss of, of about 43%. Alkaline resulted in a weight loss of about 32%, almost a third. And ours was actually 0%. So this is evidence that our product is actually pH 7 in nature. It's neutral. Um, and one of the points we got awarded for um, the Green Building Certification was sustainability due to extension of life of equipment. That means if from day one, the aircon was using our enzymes to clean the coils and so forth, then the coils will remain the same. And so therefore it will remain optimum or optimized all the way through without any corrosion. Whereas if everyone or anyone started using acid or alkaline, it start being degraded. And you see on the bottom left hand side and you see what happens when the coil has been corroded? Bottom left side, you've seen folded fins, whereby um, the fin became so thin and soft that it will bend. And when it's bent, the airflow is not good. You will start to use more energy to blow out the uh, satisfactory amount of air that is required. And at the same time, behind the folded fins, biofilms will still be there, capturing more fungus, bacteria, and so forth. Which is why sometimes, even after a chemical clean, you can still smell the mold smell because it has not been removed. It's near impossible to remove without causing major damage because if chemicals were to be applied, it continues to corrode, but because of the corrosive nature, they have to flush it away very quickly. So it only cleans the surface or, or slightly below the surface. Anything deeper than the surface area or near the surface area will be still dirty. And that's why all these coils remain um, contaminated. On the right hand side, you see that the uh, fins have been oxidized and corroded. Um, this can happen in various situations, not just uh, with chemicals. It can be with um, pressure jet. Uh, when people use um, high pressure water jet, the pressure is so powerful, it starts to bend uh, the coils itself. And so when it bends the coil, it means the airflow, the aerodynamic is not good and it leads to higher energy usage eventually. And if they continue to do it, it may even bend or fold like on the left-hand side. These are before and after um, pictures, speed wall unit, top left-hand side. You see the second picture where the blue color is still there. So that's what you get when you buy a brand new aircon. It remains there, uncorroded and pristine in nature. Top right-hand side, you see the fan coil unit, very dirty and it's clean. Bottom right-hand, you see the air handling unit, the giant units you find in big buildings. And you see a lot of um, mold and fungus and biofilm oozing out towards the bottom. This is a sign that basically it's actually overflowing in the midsection of this AHU, which are very big in nature. They can be six feet or eight feet or nine feet tall, basically. And it means the whole thing is filled with biofilms. It's all coming out. And it's a lot more at the bottom. And because there is some acidic uh, secretion from these biofilms, it causes corrosion as well, and the drain pan you see is corroded. So on the right hand side, you see that we have decontaminated, meaning we've removed all the biofilms, mold, fungus, and algae, okay. but the rust remains there because it's already a chemical reaction. But when our enzymes are being used, it helps to clear whatever organic contaminants are in the drain pan as well. And as it goes down the drain pipe or the pipes, it also helps to clear the pipes. And into the environment, the drainage, the rivers, and so forth. Because of the eco-label nature of it, it will readily biodegrade within 28 days, unlike what these chemicals are doing. Every time a chemical cleaning is done, it pollutes the environment, you know, and we may end up um, consuming it ourselves, bit by bit. And the bottom left-hand side is a ceiling cassette. You see it's highly um, contaminated with the biofilms. And after it's done, it's, you still see the bluish, uh, fin color there. So it shows that it's uncorroded and pristine clean. And when we do the work, normally we will do airflow testing. So the airflow meter we use here, the top row um, shows a reading in red and below in the second row, it shows a reading in green. After the um, uh, coil has been cleared, it shows there's a jump in the airflow. So what this means is um, potentially you have um, less energy usage because the, the coil is cleared. And also, um, as we say, we are decontaminating it. We are eliminating 99.99% of biofilms, bacteria, mold, fungus, algae, et cetera. So the air will be cleaner. This is how we contribute to air quality. 
Um, air quality is important because it leads to this thing called the sick building syndrome, which the United Nations have um, highlighted about. And um, we contribute in this way towards um, everyone's health. From time to time, we have some energy consultants who will come along with us. They will do testing on the energy um, movements. And this was a, a, a shop outlet where they have three ceiling cassettes. We took two weekdays, Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, two weekends, Saturday and Sunday, and it averaged out about 16.2% average kilowatt savings after we've decontaminated the aircon units. And we've found the range from 15 to 20 plus percent in many other places. But we normally downplace this a bit to maybe 10% savings in energy. This is an illustration. On the left hand side, you see two bl blue pillars. They represent either the um, coil or the fin or the filter of the aircon. The left pillar actually has been treated with our filter treatment product or and the um, coil treatment product. So it prevents the growth of biofilm, mold, fungus, and algae. Our coil treatment comes with a 12 months warranty. There will be no biofilm, mold, fungus, and algae growth. The second pillar shows where it is not treated. So biofilm starts to build up, contaminants start um, breeding and growing, building up at the, towards the bottom due to gravity, and the airflow is no good. And when the aircon is turned on, even after a chemical clean, some of these particles will still come out because um, not forgetting the fact that mold fungus and, and, and all these um, little uh, particles, they will have roots embedded in the coil or even the filters. So they will be blown out and we may breathe it in. It causes us to be not well. Bottom right hand side is to sh show you a water pipe system which has been um, blocked or has uh, contaminants uh, like biofilm, mold, fungus, algae. So the water, the water flow going to the right-hand side may be obstructed and it may cause the equipment to um, break down because it's not a smooth flow or it may backflow to the left. Similarly, with a human blood vessel on top, you see if cholesterol builds up, blood flow is not good, it could lead to a heart attack or you know, that, and then, uh, or other ailments. So it shows the similarities between humans and equipment. You know, the pipes need to be taken care of. And this is to show you our um, filter treatment, where we show you a before uh, the treatment. You see that um, on the left-hand side, the is a mac, um, microscopic picture that's been blown up. You see a lot of contaminants, the fungal mold roots and so forth. On the right-hand side, after we've treated it, it shows that it has been um, removed. So there's more um, spacing and so forth. So it helps to prevent the growth of biofilm, mold, fungus, et cetera. And therefore it also contributes to the coil remaining cleaner for a longer period. So you don't have to do as much cleaning subsequently. And um, with the coil um, treatment that we apply, where we give 12 months of warranty that there will be no such um, contaminant growth, we have actually done some studies here and it shows that um, the um, fouling rate comparison between conventional cleaning and our air stack clip uh, treatment it shows that um, with our treatment, it remains fairly low uh, in the red color, whereas other methods shows that it starts spiking up eventually, you know, over the months. And um, likewise, with the temperature comparison on the right, the temperature remains fairly consistent over the following months, whereas with other uh, methods of cleaning, it starts to rise because the efficiency is not there. So we also do duct decontamination treatment. Um, we have a duct treatment product. We send in our robot inspector, remote control. We have mechanical uh, rotary contact brushing method tool sets, coming in all shapes and size to cater to different types of ducting system because we believe that the biofilms and the um, dust and bacteria and so forth have bonded itself to onto the surface of the ducting and they have to be aggressively aggravated. And when we do that, there's a high powered vacuuming machine with double HEPA filter to suck in everything. And once we're done with this decontamination, we will do a misting of our duct treatment, which will stick onto the inner surface of the ducting while the aircon is turned on. And we give a warranty of up to 12 months that there will be no biofilm mold, fungus, algae growth. So in a lot of places like malls, schools, office buildings, etc., this should be a something of consideration, but uh, in, um, Developing countries, I think uh, the tendency is a lot of people overlook this because it's out of sight, out of mind. It's normally this is above the ceiling and people don't get to see it. So, but unfortunately, the air will be coming from the air cons 
through this ducting and into the through the diffuser and into the room and we breathe it in if this um, ducting is contaminated we are going to be um, not very well so these are more pictures of before and after the ducting has been cleaned left hand side you see it's pretty contaminated right hand side um, when it's already cleared off this could be the scenario in your building where you are right now okay if you are unaware of it so we have other products like the service treatment the bmst whereby we will do deal with hospitals operating theaters and we do pharmaceutical clean room factories the product is misted onto the surface from ceiling to, to the wall the equipment the furniture etc and it will kill bacteria mold fungus and algae and then we do another round of misting and it will bond itself onto the surface and we provide a warranty of up to 12 months that there will be no biofilm mold, fungus, and algae growth. Um, this is what we do for uh, a lot of um, private hospitals in Malaysia and so forth. Um, with this product, um, last year being the year of the pandemic, there was a lot of requests from our um, existing clientele base in other countries that um, were very concerned about the um, COVID-19. So what we did was we did some research and we included some ingredients that are uh, recognized and um, approved by WHO and the CDC um, into the same product, the, the surface treatment product, and it became a, a disinfectant, an antiviral disinfectant or sanitizer. And we will do um, even disinfection service and so forth. And the application is across the board in any situation. Um, when we do the work or after we've done the work, we do a swap a test. Swap sampling will be done before. Um, you see in the bacteria count at the bottom, it shows about um, log five, which is 10,000 count. And this and mold count is about 1,000. After we are done, you see that it is um, ND, which is not detectable anymore. So it's actually eliminated. It is actually um, completely eliminated or, or we call it 99.99%. And likewise with our uh, treatment product, this is before treatment on the top left hand side. Then four months later, because we are giving a warranty of up to 12 months, four months later, we do a swap test. It's, you still see that it is pretty clear, less than 10 count. And then um, 10 months after that, less than 50 count. So it is still considered 99.99% effective. And you'll go on until 12 months. And before then, our warranty is up. And, and it's another round of um, treatment that's needed. We also address problems in the cooling towers. In cooling towers, you see the um, dark area of, uh, above there, it's uh, called the infield, something like the coils uh, uh, in the aircon units. So this is a breeding ground for bacteria, mold, fungus, biofilms, etc. And it's also a breeding ground for Legionella bacteria. In most of the developed countries, Legionella bacteria is of great concern because it's, it leads to a, a disease called Legionella disease. And it's actually a respiratory um, disease that's not unlike um, COVID-19 itself. And it causes people to die, actually. So what is commonly done is in the water sump area, the water basin area there, people would just put some chemicals to treat the water so that it remains clean without the bacteria and so forth. But above that, the black area or the dark area is actually the infills. This is the production ground. It is breeding. And there's a strong airflow. You see the arrows um, flowing up and then going out to the side. If you happen to be at the side of this cooling tower frequently, you could get infected by this Legionella bacteria. Um, so we are saying, why not decontaminate this infill, which is why we have a cooling tower solution. We pour it in overnight. We let it run for eight to 10 hours or so. During a time, it will, it will break down the bondings of the biofilms together with it goes mold, the fungus, the legionella bacteria, and so forth. And the next day we will filter up everything. I and mean, once we are done, it actually leads to the optimization of this uh, cooling tower unit. So what it means then is because it's working better, the water that's going to the chiller below that will be cooler. And therefore the chiller system will not have to work as hard and the energy bill would drop. A lot of energy consultants normally focus on the chiller system. Um, they say that it maybe contributes 50 to 70% of the energy bill in a big building. So if we, and they heard that um, basically, if we could optimize the cooling tower, then it will help them to reduce the energy usage of the chiller. 
So that's why energy consultants also want to work with us on this. So these are examples of the scenario. Um, of the high temperature you see, um, normally in the tropical or, or even Middle East region or Africa and so forth, higher temperatures like this, 25 onwards to 50 plus degrees, Legionella bacteria will be breeding. Okay, it will be, you know, a uh, playground for them. And when these uh, whole, the infills are uh, blocked, you see this diagram here, in the, the which is uh, showing here, it's actually um, contaminated. So the water flow or water distrib distribution is not good. You see that it's very um, foamy and bubbly at the bottom. On the right-hand side, you see that once it's cleared, water distribution is evenly distributed. So this is when the infill uh, of the cooling tower is doing what it's supposed to do. And it's um, um, optimizing the efficiency. So what it does is um, we talk about removal of um, legionella habitat, removal of biofilms control regrowth, improving the heat exchange, decreasing TDS and scaling, reduction of biocytes and water usage, reduction of maintenance, and it's safe to humans. It's non-toxic, non-corrosive, and environmentally friendly. So we actually recommend not to use too much um, unfriendly chemicals, basically, um, because we're concerned about the environment. And this is an example of um, water sampling, basin water after uh, we've added our um, cooling tower treatment. Um, 30 minutes later, you see it start to change color. 60 minutes later, it gets darker. And 24 hours later, you see the color is very dark. This is to show you that Legionella bacteria resides in cooling towers and they can break off at any time and they can get thrown into the environment, into the air and so forth. And it continues, it's like a factory to churn out Legionella bacteria. So if we are to remove the habitat, then the usage of chemicals can be reduced in the water basin. So it's another way of um, sustain improving sustainability. Last but not, but not least, we're talking about the bottom part. For every one degree of improvement, the chiller efficiency improves by about 3% as a rule of thumb. So um, it's much better for everyone all around. We have um, some other products as anti-corrosion, antimicrobial bond coat called the BCCM, which is normally used for external equipment like compressors um, near a seaside environment or oil and gas platform, or even near a water treatment plant because of the corrosive vapor that comes out. So in our case here, our product, um, it's a, a, a multi-pronged product. It's cross-link technology, you see on the right-hand side. Every one layer combines what is commonly um, used, which you see on the left-hand side, with typical um, anti-corrosion uh, products. Normally you have a layer of primer that is applied, followed by anti-corrosion components, and followed by a hydrophilic layer. So what happens is after it gets scratched a couple of times, the effectiveness of the um, anti-corrosion uh, effect is actually pretty much um, gone. In our case, because the product has cross-linked every uh, component of it, and it is only about seven microns thick, so therefore heat extraction is not affected. So we give a warranty of up to 12 months for one layer of this, and we can go multi layers So for every one layer, it's another year of warranty. So manufacturers will sometimes use us to coat their air compressors and so forth before they send it to a seaside environment or a highly corrosive environment. So we have collaborations going on in Malaysia and in Australia. We are in relation with um, UMP, Cerium, UTM, in Australia, it's of Melbourne, uh, UNSW, and we also have something you uh, of Nottingham. And um, our strategic alliances are with Biotech, which is under the Ministry of um, Science and Technology and Innovation in Malaysia, MOST, Green Tech Malaysia, which is under KETA, the Environment Ministry. Um, we are covered by um, insurance but for projects under QBE. We are members of ASHRAE Green Building Council, Australia, Malaysian Building, Green Building Confederation. We've won um, several awards and so forth. Certifications are all um, displayed there. Um, we get third-party verifications from um, organizations such as Camwatch, ALS Laboratory, Acumen, CRIM, and CTRM in Malaysia. And these are some of our clients uh, in, in Malaysia and so forth. It includes hospitals, manufacturers, schools, the Navy ships, the police. Okay? 
So we are offering partnerships when we um, um, go on this um, project. Basically, we're trying to transform um, the, the whole um, industry to become responsible and caring um, by introducing our bio green eco and now nanotechnology. So we are very focused on what we say and do um, since 2002 in Malaysia and, and since 1990 in Australia. So um, as mentioned, our product is food grade, non-genetically modified. That's the gist of it. And if you're wondering, uh, I mean, uh, how much time do I have, uh, Dr. No? In fact, you have overseed, over put, oh. over. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, yeah. And I'll move on to this part, slide here. So, um, so I'm contactable on my email, or you can scan the QR code on the right. If there are any questions that you may want to ask, and oh. we actually uh, the founder of our company is speaking on Thursday. So, actually, uh, it's not Tuesday. Oh, on the 18th at 2:30, Mr. William Rodney, you're the founder, will be speaking on. Saving the planet with multi enzyme technology. Yes. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I think uh, the element that you have shown in terms of how you want to save life, health, you know, and the fact that every one of us are probably uh, do not know some of the things that is uh, coming into our body through the air con and the air quality, that's something very dangerous and um, that is invisible yeah so uh, this is what i meant to say if we are going to buy products that are hazards to our health it's not giving us any uh, family sustainability but if it's going to be improved because you have discovered uh, one of the main elements of you know why things goes wrong i think that is where the suspicity improvement comes in <laughs> for the people to enjoy yeah, the new types of products that you have brought in. Yeah? So I I would like, uh, you know, open uh, a lot of discussion because you are very technical and I'm sure a lot of the people are from the education background or people from the industry background and people from the health background would see that your product is very much uh, excellent in terms of not only its compliance, but your in your research and your development itself, a company that has high R&D, and um, this is what makes a difference with someone who cares for the life and they make data available for people to prove or to show the evidence of that health is important. I open the discussion to anyone who would like to ask, and I'm sure a few people would like to be in connect with you to probably take uh, distribution ship or agency arrangement with their country. Anybody yes. has a question? Anybody has a question? Yeah, I already mentioned. Any question? Yeah. I have one question uh, for those who are there. My question is very much into the fact that uh, this industry has long time been developed, yeah, and it has moved from uh, mechanical to eco, means eco for the fact that it has gone into eco technology and nanotechnology came to be more fine tuned. Yeah? What else? What's the next step after this? What kind of technology will people have to go into as part of improving the air quality? other than having the compliances and all this uh, element of, you know, um, protection and hazards that you qualify. What more does people need to know about health? I, I think, um, I suppose more education about the um, effects of um, unhealthy air is important because I think um, more and more people become aware mm -hmm. that um, uh, there may be a possibility that indoor air quality is possibly worse than outdoor air. In many cases, and what we are addressing is one of the components, um, uh, meaning the bacteria, mold, fungus, etc. And a lot of people don't realize that um, it all starts from the aircon systems. So that's why we focus our technology um, in this particular area on the aircon itself to address the air quality issue. Um, and um, we found over time, of course, uh, we continue to improve the product as we go along. But what we would like eventually is, 
see, um, since we are, this is an international um, event, many of the countries um, they have an opportunity to work with us in terms of like um, applying our technology and then getting it right. You know, as some develop or developing countries, they, as they improve, more and more people start to use aircons. And when they use aircons, the tendency is a lot of these people will follow the conventional methods, chemicals being used and so forth. So if you were to start off immediately with green technology such as ours, it takes care of the environment, it keeps the air cons efficient, it lowers energy usage, it the environment. It's a whole chain reaction, basically. And, and um, I think um, we are willing to even talk to um, technical colleges to train people to upskill or reskill to use our technology because there are certain SOPs that need to be um, adhered to. Uh, they are a bit different from the conventional method. And if they were to start doing it with commitment, I would say the environment would be far better in every country in the world. I, I totally agree with you. We all have to be very concerned not only saving the planet, but also save uh, the quality of the air that we are all living in because either we stay inside the house or we go into another uh, restaurants or we go to any places that are all aircon based. Yeah? So we know that we want the cooling activity where, it's, where we feel a bit more uh, soothing, but on the hand, it may, be, it not, may not be healthier as you said. Yeah? So for those who are, um, who are visiting the exhibition booth, uh, take note that uh, Aerostack is one of our exhibitors. So you can always visit the exhibitor's uh, booth profile. You can uh, definitely go into the meeting room and meet up with Michael personally, have your discussion one-to-one -one and uh, B2B. And then the, more so if everyone else wants to know more about the technology and also wants to uh, build a strong relationship respect towards supplying manpower to uh, Aristec to, to be part of uh, growing the industry of this nanotechnology, eco-friendly, aircon, air quality. I think Aristec is the way to go because they have proven to have all those elements that not only save the planet, but also increase the quality of the air and improve on the health of the people. I think that's very sustainable because that is what the five P's all about. Product, process, people, planet, prosperity. I believe you have that in Aerostack where you're not only producing the air quality aircon, you have your processes which is highly compliant with elements of uh, you know 14,000 halal and so on. But on top of that, you are taking care of the community that is taking the aircon as part of uh, the quality that they want, the, the element of the value, but you have also put into the fact that you want to save the planet also with all these less chemical products or uh, good quality products. Uh, so I must say that the prosperity that embedded into your product is to give people the high quality element for their money. Yeah. So I believe this is a clear example of a P5 model of a product that encompasses a complete uh, element of P5 yeah, on the product, process, people, planet, prosperity. If there is no questions, uh, I would say I would like to thank you, Michael. And you have another session, I know, with your boss. Your booth is on, so I believe more and more people would definitely like to touch base with you. Uh, this is just a beginning with Susnet. Uh, but now that I know who you are, how we can work together is on the next level, yeah? So with that, uh, it's right on top, it's right on the door at 6, uh, 6 p.m. So I would like to say thank you to all the people that have stayed back, yeah? We have the really enjoyed the day. We hope every one of us have really learned a lot from everyone that has presented today. And we hope we can see all of you again and then in our everyday session in the presenter. And for those who wants to present additional uh, topics, 
you can always liaise with me and I will see whether I can rope it in or create a dialogue out of a conversation coming up from everyone who has participated in this forum. Yeah. So with that, I thank you, everyone, and uh, hope to see you tomorrow. Okay, inshallah, see you today. To see you today, and then uh, have a nice day. Enjoy yourself, and uh, stay safe, stay sustainable. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you.